Well, new studies suggest that workers in the Asia-Pacific region with artificial intelligence skills could see their salaries boosted by more than 30 percent and enjoy faster career progression. And the research by Access Partnership was commissioned by Amazon Web Services, or AWS. It found that in Singapore, employers are willing to pay a premium of between 25 and 35 percent for AI skills, with those in the IT sector being able to enjoy the largest pay boost. And the keenness to develop those skills transcends generations, from Gen Z workers to baby boomers. In APAC, more than 90% of workers expect their AI skills to have a positive impact on their careers, including increased efficiency, high job satisfaction, and faster career progression. In fact, employers expect their companies to become AI-driven organizations by 2028, with the IT and telecommunications sector expected to lead the charge on its adoption. But right now, the workforce isn't ready. The research actually shows a looming AI skills gap across the Asia-Pacific region, including Singapore, as well as a training awareness gap across organizations. We see a high demand for skills, or for AI skills and workers with that expertise, but also a lack of supply. So therefore, it's really important that governments, industries, education, educators, and institutions create and deploy training content, and also ensure that that content is relevant for those roles so that workers can innovate and drive digital transformation in this region. The study also looks specifically at AI and gender. Women workers in APAC are more interested in developing artificial intelligence skills than their counterparts in the US and the UK. And within the APAC region, women in middle income countries like India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand are more interested in developing AI skills than those in higher income countries such as Australia, Japan, New Zealand, Singapore and South Korea. Now to talk more about the study, we have Hui Yi Lim, Director of Digital Transformation and Access Partnership. Uh, Hui Yi, let's talk about one of the key findings, which is why women in middle income economies show more interest in advancing their careers with AI skills compared to those in high income countries. And what, what does discrepancy in the level of interest could mean for the organization and econo economy as well? Hi, Liz. Um, very good to be on the show. There are likely several factors driving the stronger interest in AI skills by women in middle income economies. One of them is the perceived potential for AI skills to contribute to higher wages and career progression. Generally, women in middle income economies face resource constraints and challenges in advancing their careers. The prospect for AI skills to therefore provide additional possibilities for earning higher wages and advancing careers is particularly appealing. In terms of the um, discrepancy for organizations and the economy overall, the strong interest by women, particularly in middle income economies to develop AI skills is a very positive development. If women are able to successfully develop AI skills and unlock the perceived benefits in wages and career progression, AI has the potential to be a very powerful tool for fostering more inclusive and more sustainable economic growth and development. Okay, how does Singapore fare in helping uh, women advance their careers with AI? How is the environment here like? Um, the Singapore government has announced various initiatives to support workers, including women, to advance their careers in AI skills. For example, the government has invested um, or is investing $20 million to fund more AI-related Singapore digital scholarships for AI-related roles. This is expected to triple the number of AI practitioners to 15,000 people over the next five years. In addition to this, the collective effort with the private sector has been helpful to support one more, uh, sorry, more women to advance their careers with AI skills. For example, AWS, who commissioned us to conduct this study, is upskilling professional women with non-tech backgrounds across the Asia-Pacific region on AI skills through its AWS Cloud Up for Her program. This has been a big success with companies such as the National Australia Bank, where 500 women signed up for its first ever cohort. In addition to this, AWS is also upskilling women from underrepresented groups and communities in the APAC region through its AWS Restart program. This program teaches women entry-level skills 
to provide them the opportunity to launch technology careers and contribute to the digital transformation in the region. Since 2017, AWS has trained over 8.3 million individuals with digital skills in the APAC region. We need more companies to be involved and more initiatives like these to help women advance their careers with technologies, including AI. Mm. Uh, one other interesting finding in your research is that um, in Japan and India, female workers, they showed slightly more interest in acquiring AI skills than male workers. Why is this so? And uh, what are the findings like for uh, other APEC countries that you surveyed? What some of the reasons are? Um, I think, as I mentioned before, in sort of the uh, middle-income economies in particular, um, typically the challenges in terms of resource constraints and challenges in advancing careers for women um, and therefore the prospects for AI to help with higher wages, to help with um, career progression becomes very much more appealing. And I think this sort of drives um, some of the difference that we see between the middle-income economies as well as the higher-income economies. Um, now, in also the research, um, there was this quite a stark uh, finding, which is that the there is a looming AI skills gap and training gap across Asia Pacific. Um, so there is a high demand, basically, but a lack of supply. How do you think you know this bridge, uh, this gap can be bridged, and what needs to be done? Who should take the charge uh, on this? Um, we do find through our study that, from the perspective of hiring around 80% of employers in the APEC region have identified hiring talents with AI skills to be a priority. However, around 75% of these employers have indicated that they are unable to find the AI talent that they need. Um, these figures are comparable for Singapore as well. From a training perspective, we also find that there is a knowledge gap where 80% of employers have indicated that they do not know how to implement AI workforce training program. And in addition to that, from a worker's perspective, the top barrier for acquiring AI skills has been a lack of knowledge on the career paths where AI could be useful. And interestingly, this uh, top barrier is the same for both male and female workers, despite the gender gap in STEM education and in the ICT sector. Um, I think going forward in terms of um, how we can close the gap, um, there is a role for both the government, um, such as the actions that the Singapore government is taking, um, as well as for companies to help play a role um, to upskill workers, um, especially for women, um, to try and close um, this gap in the STEM education as well as the ICT sector. All right. Hui Lim, the Director of Digital Transformation at Access a Partnership, joining us to talk about uh, women and AI and how AI skills uh, can help careers.